Wow, I'll tell you what, how many is excited about being in the house of God tonight? I'll tell you, I traveled yesterday 13 hours from 3.30 in the afternoon, my time, till 3 o'clock in the morning, this time, to get here. I was planning on leaving on Tuesday, but God had another appointment for me. And before I left to Virginia yesterday, uh, I had a word to speak over a man's life. Uh, that brought a life changing. How many knows that we need a word to bring life change? My God, I want to tell you what, he's still changing me. Don't I look better than I did the last time? Well, I'll tell you what, I've traveled uh, across America and around the world, uh, been to Africa since some of you saw me the last time, and to Ireland, and uh, did a prophetic conference in Ireland. But quickly, I just want to share something. Uh, our speaker tonight is going to be with us. I'll tell you what, uh, Brother McCoy, he's a prophet of God. And the Lord has sent me to the house tonight as a prophet also from Virginia. And uh, not as a pastor, but as a prophet. He's sending me around the world. But he's got some of the CDs with him tonight. He's got four CDs. And uh, we're going to have them over there in a the chair. And after the service, if you want to get some of his CDs, you can come and get get them, and he's just going to let you have them for a free love offering, whatever you want to give him for those CDs. And if we could have a couple of the guys go over there, we have some boxes. We want to give every adult a notebook tonight. It's got paper in there. It's got our pictures on there. Uh, let me see. This is Pastor Bubba. Does anybody know Pastor Bubba Dees? Well, his picture is on there. My words. Let me tell you what. And uh, we have Prophet McCoy on there, and then a picture of me on there. I'll tell you what. And so uh, you're going to have the three of us staring at you. Uh, so this notebook is not just for the prophetic conference, but this is for you to take notes in. Uh, I learned something that was awesome. How many knows that your lifetime is a lifetime of learning? And we learn from the people around us. When I was in New York, there was an awesome word that was released. It was the three L's. We all start out with the first L, which is losers. Every one of us was a loser. Look at your neighbor and say, you were a loser. You were a loser. We were all losers. The second L is learners. Tell your neighbor, you got to be a learner. <clears throat> and when you become a learner, then guess what? You can become a leader. And when you become a leader, then you'll know how to love. It's all about love. Next month, I celebrate 42 years with the Lord. And uh, I'm in my first year of my second 40 years of ministry. God told me in Nigeria, I can no longer tell people that I've been in ministry for 40 years. Because the first thing that enters their mind is, I wonder how much longer that old gray-haired guy is going to live or when he's going to die. And so uh, when you tell him you're in the first year of the second 40, that paints a different picture. How many knows that our words are important? I believe that God has the word in this prophetic conference that he's going to release that's never been spoken before. There's two words that God gave me in my spirit while I was in the motor coach traveling. He said, your worship must be radical, and he said it must be creative. If we're doing what everybody else is doing, then why would I need to come to your house? I can go to any house. So your house needs to be different. Tell your neighbor, your house needs to be different. My God, I want to tell you something. And I believe in the next three days before Sunday that you're going to see a difference. So the first thing I want you to do tonight to start off the prophetic conference, I want you to get your camera out of your pocket. Now I want you to hold your camera up. Now I want you to take a picture of your neighbor. Go ahead and click it. Hallelujah. Now, how many of us want a blessing from the Lord tonight? Now, I want you to take a picture of your neighbor walking in their blessing. How many of us need a healing tonight? Need a healing? All right, take a picture of your neighbor walking in their healing. Now, how many needs a miracle from the Lord? All right, take a picture of that person walking in the miracle. You see, if you cannot see yourself in the picture... Guess what? It'll never come to pass. There are two important words in this prophetic conference. The first word is prophetic, and the other word is pathetic. We've had a lot of pathetic in the church. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't look pathetic. You're not supposed to act pathetic. God wants you to walk in the prophetic. There is a difference. Tell your neighbor there's a difference. 
So in three days, you're going to take another picture. And when you see your new picture and see yourself in the picture, I want you to see the change that God is going to bring about in Jesus' name. Change, transition. I'll tell you what. He's renewing our mind. I have two beautiful ladies that are in ministry. They're part of my ministry under my covering. Uh, one of them's been here before, Sister Peggy, and her husband Fletcher. Uh, he's working now, so he couldn't come. And so she brought a sidekick with her. Her gorgeous sister. Younger sister, too. My words. And... Uh, uh, Hallelujah. We're not going to talk about that too much. A young and old. I, I, I always get myself in trouble, Pastor Bubba, because my wife always says, Mummy, Mummy, Pastor Mummy says hello. That's her name in New York. My wife, her name is Pastor Mummy, and they just mobbed her when we were there uh, in New York on this recent world conference that we were there. And uh, But she called me right before I came to the house of God, and she said, Make sure you greet everyone. And then she reminded me, Do not tell them how old I am. I used to tell folks that, uh, you know, I was one age and she was eight years younger. You can figure that out. So when I was in Africa, the Lord said, don't do that. He said, you just tell the people she between 55 and 57, and they can figure that out. She said, did you tell anybody? I said, no, I didn't tell anybody. I told everybody. My God, that's a forbidden thing to talk about age. But I'll tell you what, how many knows that God is doing a new thing? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say he's going to do a new thing in your life. There's a song that we sing in Africa. Do something new in my life. Do something new in my life today. God is doing something new. I'll tell you what, he's renewing me, strengthening me, and sending me all around the world. This year I'll be traveled 150,000 miles. When I leave here, I have five more nations to go to before the end of the year. And uh, we have many more flags to put up. We'll have another flag for Ireland coming. We've got to get the other flags up. We have now traveled to 12 nations around the world through the ministry. And God's opening up some more doors for travel next year. Next year, I have a bunch of folks that's going to go to Ireland with me. Over here in the front is two that's going to Ireland. We're going to return to Israel next year uh, at the end of February into March. I have folks from Ireland and other places that will be traveling with us uh, to uh, Israel. And uh, you must plan in the future to make a trip to Israel. That is a must. So you see, we read the Word of God, and the Word of God is the most precious thing that we can ever hold in our hands. But when you go to the place and you walk in the place where you have read about, it's just like the picture you just took. When you see yourself walking in the blessing, when you see yourself walking in the healing, when you can see yourself walking in the miracle. And I shared with the folks in Ireland, when I was at the point of death and was convinced that I was going to die, I did not see myself in the casket. And God spoke a word, and he raised me up. And he did a miracle work. He is a miracle working God. I want you to say that. He is a miracle working God. You see, you must speak that. Not only must you speak that, you must believe that. I want to tell you something. When you were little children, someone told you the sky was blue and you believed that. Someone told you that the grass was green and you believed that, didn't you? Someone told you that that thing that went bow wow was a dog and you believed that. You see, I've been convinced like many people through the years that believing was something else that you had to acquire or get. No, you've always believed. But you see, you just believe for the wrong things. Now that you know Jesus and you have faith, you can believe for the right things. Isn't it time for you to believe for the right things? My God, I'll tell you what. We will believe everything else. But when it comes to this, this is where we struggle. And this is all the answers. The answer for everything in the world is right here in this book. Sister Debbie, I want you to come right now. I'll tell you what. This young lady, she is licensed with the ministry. And uh, she is just... Uh, was so thrilled to be with me in New York. I'll tell you what. She said, I'm breaking out of North Carolina. I am now in New York, never was in New York. I'll tell you what. And uh, 
It, it was just awesome. We had two Sunday morning services, and she was in the prophetic uh, in the world conference there. And uh, what an awesome time in New York! But I want her to go ahead and just share with you real quick. Then I'm going to bring uh, Peggy to the platform, and she's going to share two or three songs and got a word real quick. And um, then we're going to go ahead and have another song. David's going to have a song for us. And then we're going to release this prophet. Uh, I believe that God has given him a word for the house. Uh, I've come a long way, and I've seen many things over the last almost 42 years. You see, I came from the old school of Pentecost. I tell folks, you see, it was quite different way back then than what it is right now. And I said, you see, many, many things that I was taught through the years, I was taught wrong. But thank God that he's releasing truth in this hour. How many free people in the house tonight? I'm so glad that I'm free tonight. Give the Lord praise in the house of God. Greet the people. Well, it's wonderful to be here with everybody. It's the first time I've been to Mississippi. <laughs> I got to get the stage right. We went to so many. <laughs> I got lost along the way there, but I realize I'm in Mississippi, and it's wonderful to be here. It's a beautiful place, and I'm just thrilled to be here among some new, more new people that we have met. As he, as Pastor Bob was talking about, we went to uh, to New York and had a wonderful time. There was so much freedom in different cultures, how they praise and worship God, and and how they minister. You just learn, learn, learn. And I felt like a sponge just soaking it up. I mean, it was just wonderful to know that, you know, we can learn, like he said, from each other. We're not above anybody else. We can all take away something from each other. And I'm pleased to have met everybody here and hope I can continue to come back and you'll have me back to con continue to fellowship with y'all. Okay. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise in the house of God. Come on, Peggy. <laughs> Hallelujah. These, these ladies, I've been knowing them now, I guess, about eight, nine years, something like that. Eleven years. I'll tell you what, time passes. I'll tell you what, just tremendous. There's one song that maybe we'll sing that after you sing a couple of your songs, two or three songs, our African song. And uh, tomorrow night, you're going to wear your African outfit tomorrow night? Okay, well, they're knee knockers. Well, we'll see, we, so we'll see what she looks like in those knee knockers. But tomorrow night, I'm going to come in my African outfit tomorrow night. I'll be sharing a word tomorrow night. And Prophet here uh, will be speaking words uh, tomorrow night and sharing the platform tomorrow night. But I just want you to open up your hearts right now and let the Lord speak to you. You see, I found out something that there's great power in his love. And his love can do more than all the words that we can speak in a lifetime. While she's getting everything ready, I want you to do something. I want you to stand to your feet. And point your finger in the air. Hallelujah. Now I want you just to reach over and touch someone. Touch a couple people. Hallelujah. I'm still trying to understand, Prophet, the great power of just the touch of God. That's all it takes is just the touch of God. Sister Cynthia, you are just blessing the prophet from head to toe. I'm not in the house as a pastor tonight, but as a prophet, and I have to say this. Uh, I brought the new license for you, Pastor Bubba, but today God spoke to me in the motorhome. One of the things that I'm telling pastors, come out here, honey. I'm going to call her honey. I can do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that there is no pastor and pastor's wife. I don't know where we ever come up with that. These are the pastors of the ministry. I didn't bring it with me, but it's going to be coming in the mail. The Lord told me to license you. My God, you're going to be on the platform speaking before hundreds of women. In the name of Jesus, my God, I love a whole shut time. In Jesus' name, my God. The Lord said for too long, he said, you've stood back. 
The Lord said, this is the season of preparation you've been in. My God and the voice of God is going to rise up in you. My words, I want to tell you something. You're going to go forth, and the little lamb is no longer a lamb, but it's a lion in Jesus' name. The voice will come forth in Jesus' name with a word you have never spoken before. God's fixing to change your whole vocabulary because the Lord is rearranging your thinking in Jesus' name. Tomorrow night, I'm going to release the word about the culture of our thinking in Jesus' name. And we're going to let the prophetic move in the house tomorrow night. You don't want to miss it tomorrow night. God's got something for you tonight. But every day, in the name of Jesus, in heavenly places, the Lord said, I'm going to carry you to my God. And it's going to be a place of rest. And in the midst of the rest, God said he's going to refresh your spirit, your soul, and your body. My God, he's going to do a spiritual operation in the name of Jesus from head to toe, inside out and upside down. My God, in Jesus' name. The things that you thought were totally, totally impossible, God said, because you have done possible. He said, you're going to see the impossible in Jesus' name. You see, when we do possible, that's what God told us to do. Then he'll do the impossible. My God. Hallelujah. The Lord said, your hands are not your hands, they're his hands. And God has given you a gift tonight, my sister. You have the gift of healing. You're going to be praying for people, and they're going to be instantly healed in Jesus' name. Instantly healed in the name of Jesus, my God. God wants to release the gifts and manifest in the body in Jesus' name. Only five times, I believe, in the 40-some years I've been serving the Lord, has all of the ministry been gathered together in a meeting. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's what happened at the World Convention in New York. There was prophets, evangelists, pastors, apostles, and teachers that were in the house, and God manifested, and the gifts flowed in every meeting in the house in New York. It was totally, totally overwhelming. My God, I want to tell you something. There is a spirit of newness that's reigning upon you right now in Jesus' name. My God, little sister, the Lord said you came to the house one way, but you're going to leave tonight another way in Jesus' name. My God, I want to tell you something. Whew, glory. It's been in the rain outside, but God said it's already raining inside. Lift up your hands and just thank the Lord. My God. Come on, Sister Peggy. Hallelujah. Bless us. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I am a vessel. Uh, you might as well not sit down. Sorry. I'm saying a sit down thing. That's it. Stand up. And y'all going to have to excuse me, but uh, I'm on holy ground, so my shoes got to come off. So if you need to remove your shoes and you can, take them off. Hallelujah. You know, the, the Lord spoke to Moses and said, remove your shoes, for you are standing on what? Holy ground. Oh, look at somebody and say, I am a vessel of the Lord. Now look up to heaven and say, Father, use this instrument to glorify thyself. Now somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Did he not did he not say that we are an instrument of praise? Hallelujah. Did he not say to come into his house and what? Make a Oh, come on. Y'all sleep out there. Goodness gracious. Did he say come into my house and what? Make a oh, What kind of noise? Woo, hallelujah. How can, can somebody in here make a joyful noise right now? Do you even know what a joyful noise is? I want to hear some noise. Noise. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Y'all don't know how blessed you are. Amen. Praise God. I usually talk loud enough without it. I'm hard of hearing, so you know the rest of that story. Anyhow, Prophet Bob, thanks for inviting me. Pastor Barbara, thanks for letting me in your church. And I'll thank you for enduring. How many of you have ever sat under my ministry before? The rest of you, it could be a mistake. 
I thank you for permitting me to be here. I really do. Since uh, Prophet Bob called me and asked me when I'd come in, I said, sure. I've been seeking the Lord as to what we would minister on tonight. And as I began to seek the Lord, he began to give me messages. In case you're wondering, this is a new notebook that has been created since that time. Now, we're going to do all this tonight. Hope we can have breakfast sent in. <laughs> Pastor Bob, or Bubba, I see you on tiptoes with joy. It's like Christmas around here every day, every Sunday, every night, every day. There's all, the gifts of the Spirit are going to begin to operate. And tonight we're going to move into the area of the miraculous. Now, how this is going to happen, I don't know. But there are eyes here that see. You've been seeing. You can see how to walk up and down the road. You can see how to fuss at people. You can see how to find error in people. But God's going to change your vision and give you spiritual vision. And you're going to begin to see how to help people. Amen. There's also deaf hearing ears here tonight that all you've ever been interested in hearing is the garbage on someone and God's going to change your life and you're going to you're going to spend a lot of time just in crying but he's going to change your spiritual deaf ears to hearing deaf ears and give you a great ability to remember and you'll be able to call it up but it won't be called up to push someone down. It'll be called up to raise them up. And you'll go before the throne of grace in intercession. And you'll have people call you. I hear you making the expression, in all these years, I've never had this many calls for help. You're going to spend a lot of time crying. Because you're going to begin to see them as you were. And as a result of seeing them as you were, you won't point a finger at them and say, yeah, 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 yeah. You'll look at the devil and say, I got you. Yeah. We're going to break that one free. <laughs> You'll begin to minister by revelation and you won't even realize it. So, how many of you here tonight have a problem? I'm going to write you a prescription. Take your pencil and that book that Brother Pastor Bob gave you. And write this, 2 Chronicles 7.14 that says that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, underline the word humble, and seek my face and pray, and change, you know, turn from their wicked ways. He said, I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. Now, in Acts 2.16, he says, I'll pour my spirit out upon all flesh in these last days. Now, let me show you something. How many of you, now don't look at me, I don't know anything about this. <clears throat> How many of you have ever gone to the doctor, he writes you a prescription, you go down to the drugstore and get it filled, and you take about half of it, you get to feeling better, you put the bottle on the shelf and forget it. Am I the only one that's ever done that? I want you to read all of uh, Second Chronicles seven fourteen and do it all. The main thing is you humble yourself. Don't wait for somebody to hit you on the head with a stick. Come to your spiritual senses and in your understanding, get God's Word. In the um, Acts, the second chapter, the 16th verse, it says, For this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, saith God, I'll pour my Spirit out on all flesh. The flesh He's going to pour it out on tonight is this. Those that only take a part of the prescription. How many of you have only taken a part of the prescription? What's your name here, brother, with the black t-shirt? Yeah. Yeah. I see God getting ready to make a change in your life. And it's good. It's very good. You're going to walk into more of His light. More of His light. Do you like cherries? Yes. wonder how I knew that. God's going to do a work for you. There's some parts about it uh, you're not going to like. 
But in that is part of your humbling in a certain area or something he's, he's got for you to do. It has, all things work for the good. Remember that? So remember it. How many of you need to know that all things work for the good of those that are called to the Lord and love Him? Yeah. 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 I want to tell you something. Out of all these messages, but there's a message. And I don't know that we'll ever get to this. I wanted to have them where you could put them in letters and put them on the board up here and you could see where we're going. I don't know where I'm going, so I can't do that. But if you'll remember, in Acts, the third chapter, Peter looked at the lame man. He looked at him expecting to receive something from him, mainly money. He was sent there to beg at the door of the temple daily. He looked at him and he said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. He took him by the hand and said, and he leaping up stood. And went running down through the church. What would you do? Who, who, is there someone in this city that's just absolutely an invalid? What would you do if some morning in the middle of church, they come running through the door and run up here and say, let me tell you what Jesus did. I want you to get ready for it because this is exactly where the church is headed. God has permitted the devil to do his dirty work, but in so doing, he's doing God a work. He has been sifting the church. You ever feel like you've been sifted? Well, look up and praise God because it all with purpose, all things work together for the good to those that are called to the Lord and according to his purpose and those that love him. You mean all the times I've been made to look like a fool, God was in it? Hey, he engineered it. He knows just exactly what it takes to get Mac out of Mac. Now, what does it take to get you out of you? Well, you go talk to God. Believe me, he knows. What he's trying to get you to do is set still so he can just write the prescription. How many of you like to go to the doctor? I don't, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to go. Well, I was the same way about going to church. I was whipped with a switch and made go to church as I was growing up. How many of you fall in that category? So guess what happened when I got big enough that I didn't have, I didn't have to stay at home? Started college. Goodbye, church. You know, that, you know how that story goes. When we reach the age we think we can do what we want to do, as we want to do, and when and where and how and with who we want to do it, we think it's okay. Where does that thinking come from? And then your instructor says, such as I have, give I thee. You get an F. I got a paper back in chemistry one time. It had an F and five minuses on it. Just to let you know, I'm not a chemist. I dropped chemistry. I was more at home and felt more at home on a tractor. Enjoyed that. I hated cotton with a passion. And I knew if I could ever make it to the seat of that tractor, I didn't have to chop any more cotton. I had to plow the stuff. The sweetest thing I can think of about a field of cotton when I drive by out there is it has someone else's name on it, not mine. And I really sort of felt like that about what God's called me into. But he said, son, I put your name on it. Now walk in it. So about 40 years ago, I'm sitting in a little church in Hughes, Arkansas, and he changed my life. As a result, I've been changing other people's lives and directions in their life all the time. Make a long story real, real short. I was taken up to glory and he showed me my ministry and showed me a huge forest of trees and take like three of us to reach around. Hand me a little axe about that long. 
I said, well, Lord, you can't cut out a tree that big with an axe like that. That's right, you can't. I said, all that's going to do is make them mad. It does. You start trimming off wild growth, and guess what happens? Don't be messing with me. I've spent about 70 years getting back right where I want him. You leave him alone. And God comes along, taps you on the shoulder and says, hello, son. Now it's my time. There's a lot of you in that same category. You're, you're witnessing, you're understanding what I'm saying to you. Even those that are up and grown in their own, some retired, some beginning, some doing this, some doing that. You're in that same category. It's called rebellion. I surely can't be the only one that has it. There's none left in my family, I can tell you that. I got rid of all of it. I got it all. Like Jesus when he went into the pits of hell. When he come back up, the ladies come to see him. He said, don't touch me. I'm not yet ascended to my father. You know why he made that statement? All the sin of the whole world was on him and there was nothing on the face of the earth to stop it, to cancel it, to get rid of it. He had to go back to the Arthur to get it canceled out. He went back to God and then God sent him back. And of all things, he walked through in a door into the upper room and said, Hello, I'm back. How many times have you heard the message about that he was buried in a borrowed tomb? What did Jesus do when he came back? He bought back everything the devil had stolen, right? That was his tomb. He could have been buried in anyone he wanted. He owned it. He bought the title deed. He didn't, bar, he didn't get into anything that was borrowed. That's like people talking about Peter getting out of the boat and they couldn't make it. He fell. Let's preach the other side of Peter and his little experience on that short walk on the water. Remember? It was coming a storm, a bad storm. These were seasoned fishermen. And they were scared. And they saw something or somebody walking. They didn't know who it was, right? Amen? Now, he didn't know who it was. Peter said, Lord, if that's you, bid me come. He said, come. Now, I want you to think for a minute. We got a storm going. The wind blowing. It's raining. It's making a lot of noise. You're scared out of your wits. The boat's about to sink. And on one word, you're going to get out of the boat and go walking on the water? Believe me, the word says that my sheep know my voice and they won't follow another. Peter knew to whom he was speaking. Do you know to whom you're speaking? Amen or oh me? Now, you say, Mac, you're sort of hard on people. Ain't half hard yet. We're just getting started. I want you to understand something. This word is for real. I spent my life, my business life, printing. I can print one of these for you in a minute. Well, maybe not a minute, but at least I can do it from scratch. You print this and you've got a word wrong in it, the customer does not have to take it. He can say, no, thank you, you keep it, I don't want it. And you do it again, whatever it takes. God has not changed His word since it started. Think of the automobiles that go down this assembly line. We got it mechanized. I mean, you can't miss what you're doing. But there's, all, there's a recall. So-and-so recalled 39,000 automobiles. Can you just imagine what that cost? God has called you into a life and into a walk after Him, and there's been no change. He doesn't change His mind. He said, I don't change. What did you tell Moses? Pull off your shoes, Moses. In this hot sand. Pull off your shoes, Moses. Got something I want to say to you. In other words, son, lay down self. I have heard the cry of my people and I've come down to check on it and it's for true and I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. And he said, no, not me. I'm, I'm checking out. He said, I'm sending you. Moses says, who in the world am I that I ought to go to Pharaoh and tell him anything? God says, surely I'll be with you. Now, did God lie to Moses? No. Now, that was a set up question and you went for it. I'm going to show you after a while. 
If God didn't lie to Moses, has he called, uh, has he lied to you? How many times have you ever wondered and asked and looked up and said, Lord, have you really forgotten where I am? You ever felt, am I the only one that ever felt like that? I know a man lived over in South Central Arkansas. His business was just bad. So one morning, sitting in front of his desk, he laid back and put his feet up on the desk and said, I just want you to know my name is so-and-so and I live at a certain address and I just want to let you know in case you've forgotten and business ain't no good. The next morning, UPS truck drives up out there in his driveway, blows a horn, he goes out to see and they're unloading packages. He said, wait a minute, I didn't order anything. He goes to the driver and says, what is this? He said, here. Gave him a whole list of stuff. Truck was full. He said, but I didn't order this. He said, it's got your name on it. And it's already paid for. And they won't take it back. You think God can't handle that? Now, what is it in your life that you have need of and there's absolutely no way it's going to happen? Who said so? Who are you listening to, the devil or the God of the impossibilities? I had a phone call coming down the road today. And I had that in my ear, and I want to tell you something. It, it is a rude awakening, but it's a great awakening. He said, you have been looking at the how when you should be looking at the who. He said, you stop worrying about how it's going to be done and make plans for it. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Yeah. Now, we've got to go all the way back over to Second Chronicles 7, 14. Oh, Lord, surely I, I, if I humble myself, I've got to do this in front of the people? No, I ain't going. Okay, then business will just be worse. I think I'll go. So we begin to lay down self. As you lay down self, as you begin to humble self and you turn from your wicked ways, what would you do if I got up here tonight and called every one of you wicked? Because you just admitted to me that's where we are. Now, would it be that there's a spot in your life, in your walk, in your ministry, wherever, that's not producing for God? Would that be right? Am I the only one that's ever been there? But now we keep that out of sight. It's like I got my Bible laying on the coffee table, but that's as far as it ever gets. For this that we're walking into, it's time for God to come in and you give Him permission to do a floor scope, an x-ray, an MRI. God, I want you to find out everything that's there. I want you to check up every cavity. I want to know everything there that's hindering me in this walk with you. I didn't say before you, I said with you. You told me you'd be with me if I'd go and do it. But the problem is, we put self on the altar, and when it gets hot, we crawl off. Only to come back to the altar again, and when it gets hot, we crawl off. It's time that we bind ourselves and fall on the altar and have someone bind us to the altar where we can't get off and let's finish the barbecue and then we'll get out and go feed the people. Then I can say silver and gold, I don't have any. But such as I have, give I thee, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be you released from every problem you have. Now, why could Peter say that? Such as I have, give I thee. What did he have? Think of the time frame that we're talking about here. He had walked with Jesus all this time. Can you imagine what a walk, walking with Jesus would really be like? Would you like to know something better? Come and walk with me. Jesus walks within me. Huh? By way of the Holy Ghost. Now that's where you are. Have you ever seen yourself that? Have you ever seen yourself in that position? Have you ever seen yourself that precious? Do you realize that you are precious in the eyes of God?
Now, if God can open your physical eyes so that you begin to see in the spirit realm, if God can open your physical ears so you begin to hear in the spirit realm, look what you got. Now you can take on the devil. You know, the word says the devil run, wanders around like a roaring lion seeing who he can devour. Now, did you know most Christians are whipped in the sound arena? Because they fail to get into the faith arena. Well, my faith is not that. Well, your faith, that, forget it. I'm going on God's faith. This is this word right here. I'm not big enough. I'm not great enough. But let me tell you something. When I sit down in the seat of that caterpillar, start that old big engine. And on the old, old caterpillars, they had what they call a monkey, a monkey engine that started the big engine. Well, we've been operating with the little engine. I found there's a bigger engine. And that's the one I want. I got plenty of power, but I haven't learned how to use the blade on the front. That's my faith. I'm afraid of digging too deep. I might get stuck. Well, so what? What do you do when you get a piece of equipment stuck in the mud? You sit there and wring your hands and cry? It's valuable. So you just get something to it big enough to pull it out. It's just that simple. Well, where are you going to find? I don't know. Just how big a mud hole are you in? <laughs> you remember these old tractors that the, the, we called them rice tractors. They, they sat about that high off the ground. Big massive things. I buried one one day. I thought I never would get it out. We did get it out. It was a ball of mud. Well, you want to wash this thing? No, go on out there and do what you're supposed to be doing. It was muddy from the time we began until we finished. You're not going to walk after God always in pressed pants and shined shoes. Get yourself in a deliverance session and you'll wish you didn't have your shined shoes. Your <laughs> pants won't be too pressed anymore. But oh, we, we, don't, we, we just believe in evangelism. I'm knocking at somebody's door. I hope that if your church teaches evangelism, that'd be like a hospital equipped to do whatever, and all the doctor on is sprained fingers. I, I, I touched that catching a football. This is so, would you fix my finger? Yeah. And somebody comes in with a broken leg. What are you going to do? Send them to down the road? When they start coming through that door back there, they're murderers, robbers, you start naming all the mess out there. They're going to come through the door. They're looking for somebody, but what they've been so far, the church is nothing they want. They've just heard about it. Come on. You want to take a good look at the church? Go look in the mirror. I'm the church. You like what you see? Well, what is there about you that somebody ought to want? That's what we're selling. Now, I want you to, I don't want you to give the devil any praise, but I want you to thank God for using the devil. And, and, and to beat the devil at his own gain, he has sifted you. And believe me, I know what that sifting's about. <clears throat> it's not so good while it's going on, but it is absolutely something else when you come out of it. Such as I have, Amen. give I thee, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he went walking and leaping right down through the church. 